RabbitMQ is an open source distributed message broker that works like a post office in the cloud. It was developed in 2007 and written in the Erlang programming language. With the rise of a microservice architecture, we were in a need of a solution that would allow those services to communicate between each other asynchronously. RabbitMQ is a tool that does exactly that with a variety of different protocols. Imagine you have a pizza delivery service that operates online. A customer uses your website to order a pepperoni pizza. Your order service receives the order details and as soon as the order is received, the order service sends a message to RabbitMQ. This message includes relevant data such as an order ID, customer address and pizza type. Inside RabbitMQ, there is an exchange that acts like a mail sorter. It looks at the messages and based on certain rules, it decides which queue should receive it. For us, that is the kitchen queue where all the new orders go because the kitchen needs to start making the pizza. The message sits in the queue until somebody picks it up. If nobody is ready to process the order immediately, it stays there, safe and waiting. On the other side, the kitchen service is subscribed to the kitchen queue. When the new pizza order arrives, the kitchen service receives the message and begins preparing the pizza. Because it's asynchronous, the order service does not have to wait for the pizza to be made. It just hands over the details to the RabbitMQ. queue. Now let's see how we can implement this example with Spring Boot. Before we can get started, make sure that you have RabbitMQ installed on port 5672. First things first, we need to add the necessary dependencies. For us, this means adding the dependency to the Spring Boot Starter AMQP. With the dependency added, we need to do configure some properties. First one is the host and port where RabbitMQ can be found. After that is configured, we need to configure the default uh, RabbitMQ user and password. With that done, the only thing that's left is to define our exchange name, our routing key and also our queue name. In the next step, we define a configuration class that's going to be used to configure RabbitMQ to work with our application. This is where we inject all of the properties like an exchange name, routing key and the queue name. Then we can start creating our queue. Our queue is gonna take in our queue name that we previously injected. And we're also gonna make this one durable, which means that it's gonna be stored in disk. With the queue configured, we can now start to create our exchange. We're gonna use a direct exchange. Now we are ready to bind the queue and an exchange. Using the binding builder, we're gonna bind our queue to the exchange with the routing key. And the final step in our configuration is to make sure that we configure our trusted packages. Now we defined our order details with all of the necessary properties. First, we're gonna have a pizza name, then we're gonna have the amount, some additions and a delivery address. We're also gonna make sure that we can nicely print these out. We are then creating our order message. We need to make sure it's serializable, which means we need to implement a certain interface and we also need to have a default constructor. Our order message is gonna contain our order details. Now we create our order service where we inject our exchange and a routing key. Additionally, we're also going to inject the rabbit template. Now we create an order method which is going to take in the order details. This method is also going to build as the order message which we are then going to send through the template. With the template we need to provide the exchange, the routing key and the message. All that's left now is to create the order controller with some endpoint. This is also where we inject our order service, which is going to be used to trigger sending of the message to RabbitMQ. That step finalizes the producer side. Now it's time to switch to the consumer side. We create our kitchen service, which is going to listen for our orders. There we create a new method, which is going to be marked as a rabbit listener. This is also where we defined our queues. And once that's done, we take in our order message. And in this case, we just print out the details. In the logs, we can see that the kitchen service has printed out the message that the customer order has been received. This also prints out all of the order details that have been sent to us successfully through RabbitMQ. With this, we finalize our video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.